Hi guys, Mikey from Nine Eight Clubhouse here, hoping you've all had a great weekend and you're all keeping safe. This is the latest in a continuing series of videos where I'll be helping you get started making music on your computer or somebody else's computer. Today, uh, I wanted to talk to you um, uh, about VST instruments and effects um, and how to install them. This process is going to be different for Windows and Mac, so I'll show you both ways. Um, you'll need access to an admin password if you're doing this on a Mac um, and in some cases on a Windows machine. So um, if you can find either find out what the admin password is or find somebody who knows it, um, that would be, yeah, that's good. That's a good thing. Pause the video now and see if you can suss that out. Cool. Otherwise, let's get into it. Um, so I'll start off um, with doing a Windows install and here we are on my Windows machine and that's purely just because that's the machine that I'm using. Um, yeah, um, I've already downloaded and virus checked the files that I'm interested in and um, so I'll just head to my file explorer which is down the bottom on my taskbar. Plunk. Um, and head to my downloads folder um, and so I so I've decided that I'm interested in installing Dexed which is the FM synth that um, I showed you how to download last week um, and I'm gonna unpack it by um, right clicking on the, the zip file and then the third option down in my uh, context menu which says extract all I want to click on that now this is where it's asking you where you want to put your unzipped file and to be honest you can put it anywhere but like I just leave it in my downloads um, and so yeah I mean you just feel free to leave the default location where it is and hit extract it's going to do its thing and there we go we've got a brand new folder with some stuff inside it um, so once it's extracted just double click on it and um, the stuff inside it is our installer um, so this this particular type of VST um, is a type that um, does most of the heavy lifting for you. It's the installer type and it's probably the easiest type of VST to install. Um, there is another type of install which is a bit more involved and we'll cover that next. Um, so to work with this one, uh, to start off with, we just double click on it and um, this is where it's going to bring up our user account control window which is... Um, uh, basically the computer saying hey do you have the right to do this thing you know are you, do you know that this is going on blah 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 um, and this is also where if you have a computer that's set up um, to ask you for a password this is where it's going to ask you for a password so um, you're going to need um, either your password or pass pin or whatever it is that your computer set up with um, to go on it go any further with the install process um, because I've got my computer set up um, with user account control I just need to press, on, press yes and it's just going to go ahead and let me continue on um, like any install of uh, new software they pretty much all make you do a license agreement these days um, so you can read it if you want this one's fairly bland basic um, it's the uh, new general public license I've been seeing this for years it's totally fine uh, you click on I accept the agreement and then you hit next and it's going to take us further on into the install process um, so this one here is just um, asking you where you want to put your uh, VST plugin directory and um, for the most part you won't need to change any of the stuff it's all automatic um, it just like goes directly to the um, uh, predetermined VST plugin spot so you won't need to change anything you just leave everything uh, as the defaults and hit next and the same thing for our 64 bit hit next um, yeah uh, so this one here this Dexed is an interesting synth because um, it has a standalone version of the synthesizer not all of them have that um, and um, that can be cool if you're um, wanting to run the synthesizer and 
just like play it from your computer without using Reaper or anything like that. Um, we're not particular. That's not the focus of what we're up to today. So I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole. But again, you can pretty much just leave this um, window um, with the default settings and and hit next. And then uh, this is pretty much ready to be um, everything. Everything set up. You just need to install. Um, click on install. It'll do its thing. And then. Um, once it's done, you can press finish to, um, finish. Seems reasonable. Um, cool. So this installer, I noticed that this installer had the, um, th both the 32-bit and the 64-bit, um, versions of VST plugins bundled together. But do be aware that, um, many of these installers don't have that. So if you specifically know that your computer and version of Reaper is 64-bit, then download and install the 64-bit version. Otherwise, 32-bit um, VSTs will work fine inside a 64-bit version of Reaper and Windows. The reverse, however, is not true. A 64-bit VST will not work inside a 32-bit version of Reaper. So just be careful about which versions you download. I know I covered it last week, but just wanted to... Um, sort of talk about that again and hammer home that point um so um yeah we kind of covered both of the 64 and 32 bit versions uh, installations there but they essentially look the same it just depends they just get um installed to different locations depending on um which one it is um but you don't need to think about it because it's all done automatically for you uh, however, this leads us on to the second way of installing VSTs, which is a bit more involved and you have to kind of pay attention a bit more and uh, know what's going on a little bit more. Essentially, what we're going to be doing is manually copying and pasting the plugin files and folders from our download page, uh, or folder, sorry, into a folder that Reaper is set up to scan for plugins. Um, and that's it's not actually that hard but there's a few gotchas there um before we do anything with like copying stuff from our download folder though we kind of need to know where it's going so um how we do that is um we're going to open up reaper and um there's a setting that i'll i'll show you and reaper will tell you where it is so um i need to open up reaper um to show you how the, how to go about doing that so i'll do that now here we go. Oops. Here's our virtual MIDI keyboard. That's going to come in handy in a moment. I'll just close that for the moment though. Um, okay, now that Reaper's open, we're going to open up the preferences pages. Uh, preference page. Preferences page. And we're going to do that by clicking on options and going down to the bottom to preferences. Um, as you can see, there's heaps of stuff going on in the preferences. There's so many options and bo bo boxes you can tick and things you can change. And it's super configurable, but we're not really going to get into any of that because it's a massive uh, distraction. What we're interested in is this, at the almost at the bottom on the left-hand side here is a, a page called VST. And that's what we're interested in. So we're going to go directly to that. So we're going to scan down, scroll down from the top hit VST, find VST under plugins, hit VST. Um, and um, actually the most relevant part of this is uh, this bit here, which says is uh, this box under VST plugin paths. Um, okay. So this is a, uh, a bit of, um, there's just, this is text which basically uh, lets you uh, type in different paths that you can paste um, your uh, your VST folders into. So like if you're interested in changing where you, you um, keep your VSTs, this is how you can customize that. But I'm not interested, we're not interested in doing that at the moment. We just want to know where they are, all right? And that's going to change from different install to install. So I'm just showing you, uh, I'm going to show you a foolproof way of getting, um, finding out where Reaper thinks your install, uh, VST installs are. So what I want you to do, um, is, um, 
find uh, the where one of these semicolons is after. So I can see one that's just after plugins here, and I'm going to get you to left click. Oops. Uh, excluding the semicolon, left click and drag and see how it's going blue. That's selecting it and I'm going to take get you to take it right up to the next semicolon and um, select that and uh, right click and copy it. So that's copied the folder location of where um, our VST plugin folder is, is located. And as far as I know, believe it, uh, as far as I believe, uh, and no, Reaper treats all of these different folders exactly the same. So you could paste 32-bit uh, um, plugins into a 64-bit folder and vice versa. You know, it won't matter. As long as your version of Reaper is, is correct, it it won't matter at all. Um, so now that we've copied it, um, we're going to open that up in File Explorer. So I'll just minimize minimize that and um, we're going to go to that folder that we just found the location for by uh, clicking up here in the address bar at the top and we're going to paste that in by holding down control and, and pressing V and then pressing enter and that's going to take us to our VST um, plugins folder and um, this has got some of my uh, VSTs in them. I, I keep them in about four or five different folders for some weird reason. I think it's because I've got heaps of different programs that use them and they all kind of install into different things. Um, but you can see, um, uh, for instance, um, uh, the sign player here, uh, the VST, uh, the actual VST file is this one here. It's the .dll data link layer um, file that's the actual plugin file that we're interested in um, they all have that um, so now we know where we're putting our <laughs> our VSTs um, where, we, where they're going to um, we can look at uh, where they're coming from so what I'll get you to do is open up your um, file explorer window a new one just by right clicking on the icon down the bottom here and choosing file explorer It'll open a new uh, window, and then we'll go to Downloads. We've already done Dexed, so um, I, I'm interested in this one here, the Redtron SE, uh, special edition of the Redtron. So um, I'm going to do the same thing that I did for the Dexed, which is right-click on it, and then choose Extract All. And again, um, I'm going to leave that default, and just hit Extract. Uh, this one's going to take a little bit longer because it takes, uh, it's got a lot of um, samples that are included with the instrument. It's a sample based um, instrument, which um, some people, I think they're called mod players. Uh, Retro on SE, there we go. So um, I actually have chosen this instrument because of this reason, um, and it comes, a, comes with a bunch of different preset sounds and samples. Um, and the gotcha with um, these types of instruments that uh, is that the, all of those other um, presets and files and um, stuff they they're all um, actually files that need to be copied copied across with the DLL file. Um, so this arrangement um, happens quite a lot with the VST instruments and some effects. So I wanted to show you how, how to do that properly, um, because you will come up against it. And um, the instrument or the effect won't work properly without all of the files. So this is, so pay attention for this, this bit, it's kind of like the, the meat of it, I guess. Um, and this is probably the only tricky part of the process, really. Um, so really what we're going to do is, we're just going to double click on it and open it up. Okay, it's got an enclosing folder. And um, so we'll double click on that and go onto it. And you can see here we've got our .dll file, which we know is our plugin, um, but it's also got this folder here. And this is all of the um, supporting stuff, like the different sounds here, and um, you know, just like other bits and pieces that the um, the plugin uses to to function correctly. 
So we've got to take all of this stuff, and that's really what the essence of it is. When we're copying, um, using this method, we need to copy everything in, inside that folder um, across, and you might need to drill down a couple of layers until you find it, but whatever um, is in the folder with your .dll file, you want to take all of that stuff, um, except for things like readme or readme files uh, you know you don't need to take them but everything else pretty much needs to come with it so how I'm going to do that is I'm going to um, left click and select them both and then right click and on the context menu I'm going to select copy so now I've copied um, where I'm going from I'll put that over on my left and then we know we're going to our folder that we found before um, through copying and pasting the location from Reaper. It's VST plugins. So I'm going to go over to that folder and right click and press paste. Um, I've already done this install earlier, so um, I'll just say replace, go. And then, so once again, a few. Um, need to authenticate with a password or a pass pin this is where it's going to ask you to do that um, because I have, have my computer set up slightly different um, I, I can just press continue and it'll it'll do that thing but um yeah it's good to know your admin passwords if you can um, yeah uh, all right so that's pretty much um, that's pretty much the meat of it, how you how you do things on a on a Windows machine. Um, I should be able to just open up Reaper now and um, and have a play, and those instruments should become. Oh, actually, um, yeah. Before we confirm that those instruments are um, uh, are loaded, what I do need to do is rescan the VST folders. So. Um, and you'll need to do this too if you've still got Reaper open from before uh, you uh, copy those files. So this just kind of refreshes the database of VSTs that are associated with um, Reaper and it will let the software know if there's been any changes. So we've done that, uh, it's done its thing, it's happy, I'm going to click OK and now I should be able to uh, right click over here and insert a virtual instrument on a new track. Um, and if I type into our search bar down the bottom, um, uh, red, here we go, there's red Tron, that's what we're interested in, it's a Mellotron copy, it's going to load up, and there we go, there's the, um, the faceplate of it, it's happy, um, and to make sure that it's working, I'm just going to go up to uh, view, and start up the virtual MIDI keyboard, which is about uh, four fifths of the way down that menu. Um, and I should, there we go, cool. So you can see actually, this is again getting here to myself, but um, this virtual MIDI keyboard has um, your computer keyboard uh, no, um, letter names on the bottom here, uh, and you can actually use your typing keyboard as a musical keyboard. Whoa, okay, crunchy. Um, yeah, so that's working all, all as I expected, and um, that's the, uh, so that confirms that one's been installed properly, and yeah. Sweet, so that's how you do it on a Windows machine. Um, uh, and I'll quickly show you how to do it on a Mac as well for you Mac users. Um, and so this, I'm just going to um, have to swap machines. So the, the yeah, it's going to do the do the weird switch switch over thing. Um, but the first example is going to be using an install package, kind of like we just I just showed you. And then I'll show you how to do a, the copy and paste method. Um, which is kind of the uh, the same idea, but actually how you do it inside a, a Mac is is different. So yeah, I'll just um, switch over and show you how to do that now. Okay, we're going to double click on our zip file that we've downloaded. It's going to automatically open up and uh, display an M package type file. We'll double click on that as well, 
Now it's going to tell us it can't be open because it's from an unidentified developer. So we just click on OK and uh, we're going to go down to system preferences. So because we're going to need to change something before we're allowed to install uh, that package. So I'm just going to wait for system preferences to load. Oh, OK. And uh, go back because actually that's, yeah, all right, here we go. So we want to go to security and privacy. Uh, and so we'll click on that and it'll take a second and okay so this thing over here on the right here it says open anyway we're going to click on that and then click on open and that's just going to let uh, OS X know that we're all good so we we'll click on continue to get through that and uh, this is the um, license that we've got to agree to so we'll click on that and uh, yep continue so basically all the defaults here are fine so uh, Again, this is uh, DXZ comes with a standalone, the VST and the AU, so that's all good. So we'll press on continue, and again, we can leave the defaults as they are. Um, these installers are pretty much... Alright, so this is where you need to enter your password. It won't let you install the software unless you've got the password, so hit that, and um, yeah, it'll just do its thing. And you're golden. So, yep, quick close, and the whole installation's done. Cool. So I guess the main takeaway is uh, you just you can leave the defaults where they are and um, just keep clicking. The um, installers are generally set up in a way that they'll just automatically install to the correct place on your hard drive. So yeah. Okay, so that's how you do it with an install package, um, and here's how you do it by copying and pasting. All right, so I've already downloaded the Mac OS X VST uh, zip file, and it's over here, and I'm just going to click on Show and Finder, and that'll take us to it. So to open it up, I'm going to double-click on it, and that'll open up the uncompressed folder. So double-click on that, uh, and these are our uh, VST files, which are different from the DLL files that we deal with um, with Windows. So I'm just going to shift and... Select that, uh, and then right click, and then find, where is copy? Uh, oh, yeah, copy two items, yep, yeah, cool. Um, all right, so now I want to open up a new finder window, and we're going to uh, paste this into the folder. So we're going to go up to go, here, at the top here, and uh, then Click on Alt, I think. Yeah, Alt or Option, whatever you want to call it, and click on Library. So once you've clicked on Library, we're going to go to uh, Audio, and double click on that, and then Plugins. So double click on that, and then VST. And this is where we want to paste um, our plugins into. So uh, we'll just right click and then Paste Two Items. Yeah. So that's how you um, uh, use the copy and paste method to get your VSTs um, yeah, in there. Um, Alright, so I'll just open up Reaper and... Uh, yeah, cool. And you can see that it's all working. So uh, I'm going to go over to the right click here, insert virtual instrument. Uh, and we'll go down to, where is it? No Fish Dub Siren. Okay, that's the package that I downloaded. Click on it, and there we go. So yeah, that pretty much covers all the different ways you can get VSTs into your computer. Um, and yeah, we might leave it there for today. Um, I've covered quite a bit of ground, and uh, yeah, you should be feeling... Hopefully you guys and girls are feeling confident to import uh, all of your free VST instruments and effects that you've downloaded. Um, and in the next video, we'll be looking at how to actually make music with these things. Ah, yay, <laughs> finally. <laughs> okay, thanks for watching. Um, and until the next video, I hope you all stay safe and look after each other. Yeah, bye for now.